Hello, and welcome to uh, this lecture on uh, virtue theory uh, within a US 275 uh, scientific ethics. Now, when we take a look at virtue theories, what we need to do first off uh, is kind of define what virtues are. Uh, and so kind of it's, it's very basic sense of virtues are gonna be trained behavioral qualities. Uh, and so basically these are gonna be kind of instilled uh, within an individual uh, and they're the result of kind of continually acting uh, in a way of, of moral goodness. And so uh, by doing it kind of repeatedly uh, and uh, appropriately, uh, time and time again as you go through your lives, uh, you're basically kind of training yourself uh, to become virtuous. Uh, you're establishing, in essence, almost like good habits, if we want to think about that. And so, in general, kind of a, a very broad overview uh, about what virtues are, uh, is that virtues are kind of restraining self-desires, you know, uh, kind of limiting the, the focus on kind of immediate wants and needs from an individual. Uh, and focus in on kind of expressing kind of kindness uh, and appropriate behavior uh, towards others. And so virtues uh, are, are gonna be those kind of good things, those moral things uh, that an individual should be doing. Uh, and that's contrasted with vices. Uh, vices uh, are, are kind of the bad things uh, that an individual be doing. And so the uh, so virtue is a, a habitual act of moral goodness, uh, a vice is a habitual act of, of moral wrongness. And the idea is to, you know, not do vices and to, you know, kind of promote the virtues as you're going through. And so when we take a look at this, uh, again, taking this and, you know, converting it into a, a virtual theory uh, within virtual ethics, uh, this is an idea uh, that an individual, uh, again, should be acting kind of appropriately uh, as a habitual way, uh, acting appropriately out of spontaneous goodness uh, because they're, you know, a virtuous person. They're a good person uh, at heart and they're going to be acting appropriately uh, rather than acting out of some sense of duty. And so they're basically, you know, acting, you know, with goodwill towards one another because it's the right thing to do. And again, this is a, a telium teleological uh, ethical approach, which is different from the utilitarian approach, uh, because we're, you know, focusing in uh, on the act uh, primarily, uh, rather than the outcome. Uh, and this idea then is that with virtue theory is that if you identify the virtues uh, that, you know, are uh, appropriate, the virtues that uh, should be pursued, if you follow those virtues, you'll live well uh, and achieve excellence uh, as you're interacting kind of appropriately uh, with one another. And so if we take a look at this, then we have to define what the virtues are, are going to be. And uh, many different cultures uh, have defined uh, what are those kind of prime virtues, what are those kind of uh, ideals uh, that we should be aspiring uh, to convey uh, as we go about uh, in our daily lives. And so uh, Plato, uh, kind of an ancient philosopher, you know, almost uh, what, 4,000 years ago, 5,000 years ago now, or, uh, not quite sure exactly when, but a long time ago, um, drawing a blank on when he was born. Uh, not important, uh, but an ancient uh, philosopher. I uh, came up with the, the main or cardinal virtues uh, as being wisdom, temperance, uh, courage, uh, and justice. And so um, those are the things uh, that should guide uh, an individual uh, and in their actions. This has been modified you know, in, in different cultures and, and throughout time. And so uh, within the New Testament um, and the Bible uh, by Paul, uh, they developed the theological virtues uh, of Christianity. And so Christianity's virtues are, are faith, hope, and charity. Um, so uh, again, a virtuous person uh, would be acting uh, in this way uh, with these basic tenets of, of faith, hope, and charity, uh, and use that uh, kind of habitually to uh, develop their behavior so that they're gonna be acting kind of appropriately uh, according to this moral code. Now again, other views uh, of virtue uh, in the, the Hinduism, um, they're you know, similar, uh, but you know, some 
really distinct differences, you know, based on the culture and their history. Um, the, the virtues of Hinduism uh, are one of nonviolence, of truth, of purity, uh, and self-control. So again, you can start to see kind of similarities, um, but, you know, a kind of uniqueness based on the individual culture. Uh, Confucianism um, has their own set of virtues, uh, um, courtesy, uh, generosity, honesty, uh, persis persistence, uh, and kindness. And so as we go through these different virtues, uh, it gives rise then to this view uh, of virtual ethics. And so these virtue ethics uh, are basically uh, we take a look at that ideal person, that virtuous uh, individual that we all should be uh, aspiring to be. They're not only going to do the right thing, um, but they're going to have the right motivations, the right kind of underlying principles present within their body as a habit um, so that they, they really don't even have to think about it. Uh, but they're going to be able to act appropriately, not because... Um, it's, it's going to have a right outcome, but because they want to do the right thing because it's the right thing to do. Uh, and so again, you know, when we take a look at these virtue ethics, we're looking at the habits that are built within an individual based on those uh, virtue uh, principles. Um, and, and basically, again, not focusing solely on the action, definitely not focusing uh, on uh, the outcome. The outcome would be the uh, the um, utilitarianism uh, approach, uh, but we're focusing in, on the reason uh, behind the actions. And so uh, again, we built a, a habit to act morally, but we're also gonna have kind of emotions and character uh, that are gonna be contributing to this. And so again, with this virtue theory and the virtue ethics, we're looking at individuals doing the right thing, basically because it's the right thing to do. Uh, again, if we take a look at this and, and put it into then these moral virtues, uh, and we have Benjamin Franklin uh, and the art of virtue over here on the right hand side, these are ideas, and again, kind of distilled down from the different cultures uh, that we've taken a look at. The moral virtues um, are those that uh, should dictate our behavior, should direct our behavior, and we should be pursuing them, uh, again, because it's, it's the right thing to do. And so we've got these key principles, these core moral virtues that are gonna be present, like honesty, uh, benevolence, um, act well towards others, and don't act uh, with malice towards one another, act fairly, uh, be kind, be conscientious, show gratitude. Uh, and again, so these would be kind of the guiding principles that are going to build those habits uh, of a virtuous individual. Now, in contrast, uh, they're also going to be a set of non-moral uh, virtues. These are things that kind of are important. Uh, we should, you know, pursue them, uh, but they're not really going to give us the guidance on whether or not we're acting morally uh, or immorally. And so examples of, of non-moral virtues are, you know, like musical talent, wit, uh, cleanliness, uh, but it also includes things like patience, uh, self-control, rationality, uh, and courage. And so we're you know, kind of shifting away from kind of Kant's uh, reason and logic uh, to the point where, you know, we're going to be building in these appropriate uh, virtues, these appropriate uh, habits uh, within the individual uh, as they're going through and and having their kind of interactions within their life. And so, uh, again, to focus in on these uh, these uh, virtue ethics, uh, Aristotle uh, within the Nicomachean uh, ethics uh, basically said that these virtues are needed for a good life. Uh, and now we've got the eudaimonian, some year I'll learn how to pronounce Greek. Uh, eudaimonia, uh, which is Greek for happiness, which we talked about previously. Uh, if a, an individual wants to you know, be truly happy, uh, what they need to do uh, is uh, adopt these virtues, to embody these virtues, and to express these virtues uh, in every action uh, as they're going through. And so uh, the function of human beings uh, is to, to use their reason in pursuit of a good life, uh, but in that pursuit of a good life, uh, they should be living well. 
uh, and by living well, they're going to acquire good habits, which, you know, as we described before, uh, are going to be these virtuous habits. Uh, and because we're going to be pursuing them, because we're going to be using them as a habit, we are then going to be using them in all our actions uh, as we go forward. To continue with them, um, a moral person then uh, has to be able to uh, apply these virtues. Um, and so a moral person cannot exist apart from a political setting that enables them to develop the requisite virtues for a good life. Uh, and so because of this, uh, ideally uh, in you know, political settings or in situations where individuals are interacting with one another, uh, they should be able to set up a system, a political system, or a, uh, kind of a governance system, we want to think about that, or at least a system of interacting with one another uh, that's going to allow them then to apply their virtues uh, as they go through uh, and have their interactions with one another. Uh, and because of that, um, ideally, uh, ethics then would be considered a branch of politics, uh, and you would hope that uh, political leaders uh, would then be able to act morally uh, and act appropriately in, in both their actions and in their, their leadership. Um, and so uh, for Aristotle, uh, he basically said that there are going to be two sets of virtues uh, that we can take a look at. Uh, intellectual virtues uh, that can be taught uh, directly to an individual. Um, but that's contrasted with moral virtues, uh, these guiding uh, moral principles uh, that have to be lived uh, in order to be learned, uh, in order to be able to build um, that, uh, that good habit so that you act with good intentions uh, as you're going forward. So virtues uh, are, are basically kind of taking a look at uh, kind of as the ideal uh, if we want to take a look at this. Uh, and so this is often described as, as the golden mean. Uh, virtues are in a middle ground uh, between excess uh, and deficiency. Uh, you know, if we take a look at it, uh, it's uh, virtuous behavior uh, is between gluttony and famine. Uh, it's between excess and deficiency. Uh, it's uh, looking at this idea that courage uh, is, is something between cowardice and foolhardiness. Um, you know, so you're, you're not recklessly rushing into danger, uh, but you're not avoiding danger completely. And so a, a virtuous individual then would be an individual that, that follows this kind of middle ground, this middle path uh, that's going to be present between the two extremes. And, you know, we've heard about, you know, acting in moderation. You know, even, you know, if you talk about, you know, potential vices, you know, it's, it's okay to, you know, I don't want to say overeat, but, you know, to, to enjoy a good meal as long as you're not enjoying this, this huge uh, extravagant feast uh, with lots of waste, you know, every meal of every day. Um, you're also not starving yourself. Um, so you're looking at this, this kind of middle ground that's being present. And so this golden mean uh, and this idea of, of virtues being found within this kind of moderation uh, is again found across a variety of cultures and across, across a variety of times throughout our, our history. Uh, so examples of this uh, in the, the Eastern cultures uh, are the Confucian doctrine of the mean and the Buddhist concept uh, of the middle path. So if we take a look at this, um, and again, focusing in on virtue-based ethics and, and this virtue theory is to uh, achieve moral excellence, to act with good moral uh, intent. Uh, these virtues then are essential for keeping the peace. Uh, and so therefore, uh, we need individuals to act in a virtuous way, uh, to ideally uh, have built those habits uh, in such a way that they almost become incapable uh, of doing the inappropriate thing. Uh, and so you wanna build the habits, you wanna have a virtuous life so that you're gonna be able to react without thinking, react spontaneously uh, and act appropriately or moral, morally uh, by following your virtues. And so, you know, build those good habits, um, but shun the vices, avoid the vices. Uh, and so with this idea then is that if you have this truly virtuous person, 
uh, this person that's following uh, in their virtues and using that as their, their moral code, they can't help uh, but to do good uh, within the world because they built those virtual vir yeah, virtue habits, um, those virtuous habits within themselves so that every action they take uh, is gonna be with well-meaning uh, as they go through. And so when we take a look, uh, kind of coming full circle then uh, at these virtue-based ethics, uh, we're looking at individuals kind of living their lives uh, in an appropriate way uh, and by doing so, uh, building habits, building good character traits. Um, and so they're doing it for the right reason, not simply to you know, follow the rules of society or to follow the rules within their, their religion, um, but they're doing it because it's, it's the right thing. And so this morality then, it involves being a virtuous person and a virtuous person in all of the interactions uh, as they're going through. And so, uh, again, this is different from um, the utilitarian approach uh, where we focused in on the means, uh, on the outcome. Uh, this is different from kind of the many of the deontology approaches where you focus in on the act. This is focused more on the being, focused in on you know, kind of the ideas that are instilled and expressed by the individual. So not focused on the action, not focused on the outcome, but focused on kind of the intent uh, and the motivations. And so kind of, again, to, to take this to kind of the, the pure kind of extreme, if we take a look at this, virtuous people uh, are gonna be doing the right thing. Um, so they're gonna be virtuous people going forward. Um, now the problem um, with this or potentially you know, some problems associated with it is that you know the virtues as we've described you know are, are a little bit different uh, from one culture to the next culture uh, and they could potentially change uh, over a period of time and so um, you know they're, they're doing the right thing for the right reason um, but they still have to determine what happens when they come up with an ethical dilemma what happens when they're you know, faced with a situation where it's not you know intuitive as to what is the appropriate action and so because of that uh, they have to be able to try to determine how it is uh, that they should be acting in a, in a pure virtue-based uh, ethics approach now uh, a modification of this uh, is an action-based theory uh, and again this is kind of focusing in a little bit more about the act uh, that we you know, talked about previously within the course so an action-based virtue theory uh, is that uh, every action uh, that an individual should take uh, is that if they want to act morally uh, they need to act uh, properly by following uh, the moral rules um, and you know, in many ways, uh, this is the way that we uh, kind of look at people uh, as we you know, kind of go through our lives. You know, we don't judge people uh, based on whether or not they're virtuous people, whether you know, they have good intent. We generally judge people uh, and interact with them in a way based on how they act and based on their actions. Uh, and so because of that, you know, we've still got the, the virtues guiding it, uh, but if we shift this now into a more kind of action-based or more rule-governed approach, a more deontonic approach, like we were talking about previously within the class, um, we're you know, kind of moving away from, you know, do the right thing for the right reason to do the right thing because that's what the rules say. Uh, and so because of that, there's some criticisms for the action-based ethics. Uh, they lack a motivational component. Uh, if you take a look at these action-based uh, virtues, uh, as we take a look at it, you know, the Ten Commandments um, are, are a good example of this. They're, they're largely negative. Thou shalt not, you know, commit this. Thou shalt not do that. You know, so, you know, largely don't, they don't tell you what to do. They just tell you what not to do. Um, and because of that, it's, it's felt that, you know, if you're taking that approach, uh, the rules get in the way. Um, so you're thinking about the rules, you're thinking about the Ten Commandments, you're thinking about, you know, society's expectations, 
Uh, and because of that, you know, you're not doing it from, you know, a spontaneous kindness or generosity. You again become focused on the act of what you're doing and the reason, um, you know, why the, the act is viewed as being moral. Uh, and this is kind of a, uh, uh, an approach then that is often used both in religious uh, and uh, kind of governing systems where uh, we use action-based ethics to kind of establish the rules within a religion, to establish the laws uh, within a society. Uh, and so what we end up doing then uh, from this approach is that you undermine uh, the virtue morality spirit. And so, you know, we're not doing things for the right reason. We're doing things so that we, you know, don't fall out, you know, fall into disfavor with our God, or we don't, you know, break the law and have to, you know, pay a fine or, or go to, you know, go to jail, be penalized uh, in some way. And so it kind of undermines then uh, this idea that, you know, if you're a virtuous individual, uh, you're going to act uh, in uh, a virtuous way. You act according to your virtues. Uh, further uh, criticisms uh, associated with this uh, is its idea then that you, you tend to judge people uh, based on their actions, uh, and so you really don't um, you really don't understand you know who the individual is and, and why they're acting and their internal qualities, uh, and so because of that, um, by using these action-based ethics, really you're you're neglecting the development of character. Um, if you're using these rules, you don't have to really think for yourself. You just have to say, okay, how is what I'm thinking about doing fit within the rules of society or the, the laws uh, that are present in the reason, region? Uh, and because of that, I don't have to develop a good moral character. Uh, I don't have to be virtuous as long as I don't, you know, get arrested and, you know, break the law and get arrested and, and things like that. So to take a, uh, again, a kind of middle of the road kind of approach when we take a look at this, uh, again, kind of an extension of, of these um, virtue ethics uh, is this idea of pluralistic ethics or often referred to as complementarity ethics. Uh, what we're looking at here uh, is kind of a, an interplay uh, between the rules of a religion or the rules of society, the laws of society uh, and the virtues. Uh, and so if we take a look at this, uh, the pluralistic ethics approach is this idea that we need to be kind of mindful and respectful of both our virtues uh, and the rules. Um, but one doesn't have that overridable uh, effect. One doesn't supersede the others. Uh, they're basically there to complement one another uh, because they both have intrinsic values and they're going to be important kind of, to interact within uh, an individual in determining uh, what it is that they're going to be doing. So again, bringing back this concept of doing the right thing for the right reason um, in this concept of, of virtue ethics and virtue theory. So uh, the reading for this short lecture uh, is chapter nine, uh, virtue theory uh, within the textbook. And as always, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to email me. Uh, thank you and have a great day.